Hi guys, so my project was on how to develop my own film. So last year, I thought of this idea. Um, it was like after our last four week project, so I couldn't do it that year. But I thought about it all summer and I was like, I really want to like get an old camera and figure out how to use film. So over the summer, I found this guy um, on YouTube of developing his own film. I'm like, it's a sign. I have to do it. But anyway, it was this really creative video on how they develop their own film at home and like go through the whole process themselves. And I just thought it was so, so cool. Um, so it stuck with me throughout the summer, the idea. And then I obviously did it this year. So my goal was to learn about how to mix the chemicals because I had no idea like anything about chemicals, like even what chemicals to use or stuff like that. So I wanted to learn about that, how to like load the camera, use the camera, um, how to shoot because I didn't know if there's like a different way to shoot on film camera than a digital camera. And then the goal, the like main goal was how to develop my own negatives out of all this. Um, so yeah, I basically used this, these people, Wild We Roam, which is a couple who like photograph together. And then during the summer, I also found this guy named um, King Japes, which he only shoots in film, which is really cool, I think. Like, something about film, it just, you can tell a film picture between a normal picture. Like, it just has so much depth and richness to it, you can't get on digital. I, that's my personal opinion. But, yeah, so, I learned from both of them, and obviously the instructions, the chemicals give you, you like, learn how to develop from that. And I learned how to shoot from the Wild room We Roam couple. Um, I didn't know what settings to put it on, so I learned from them. You basically just shoot it like a normal camera, and uh, mine is a Nikon, and so um, I'll talk about it more when I show you like the all the process I went through. But I found out that I can shoot on it like I do my normal one, which I shoot on my normal one all the time. So, so I'll, sh I'll kind of show this video and stop it every once in a while and kind of explain, you know, what's going on. So. So basically, learn how to load it because it kind of looks intimidating at first. But you just put it all the way to the red line and, you know, close it. Turn it on. Okay. So you see this right here. And how um, it says M-A-S-P auto. You know, and then it has all these little icons. Well, I have a picture somewhere. Where I do. Okay. This is my Nikon, like the one I have just to shoot normal. It has M, A, S, P, you know, auto, and then, like, you know, all these, just like that, you know? So, basically, on my normal camera, I set it to auto, A, or auto aperture. So, you set the aperture, and to get the most bokeh, which is, like, when something's really crisp in the front, but then, like, in the background, it's blurry. So if you want the most depth in your picture like that, you want to open the aperture of the camera all the way up. So this lens they gave me, the um, highest aperture is 5.6. So that's what I put that on. And then if you put it on the aperture setting, it'll change the ISO, um, the... Um, shutter speed, and everything else for me. So that's really nice, and that's what I do on my normal camera. So it was really easy, easier than I thought. So there you go. 
and then taking it out. Yep. And then another thing I learned is that you always store your film in a refrigerator, which I didn't know. But it keeps it from oxidizing and like losing its like vibrance, losing the color. Um, it just like freezes the picture in a way, like keeps it, you know, archives it better. So this part I learned, I thought was really cool. I did it in a changing bag I bought, which you like stick your arms in this like trash bag looking thing that's black because you don't want to expose your um, your film to the light. So basically you have to do all of this in the dark, complete dark, which at first is very scary, but once you practice, it gets a lot easier. I thought it felt so amazing being able to do that. So learn how to do that, do that, and then it's time for the chemicals. So you have to get the water to like exactly 102 degrees, which is very annoying. It takes a lot of time, but after you like get a routine, I always put like my water, my really hot, I turn the water to really hot and then I go do the thing in my bag, you know, change, put it onto the reel and onto the developing tank. So I let those, the chemicals sit in the hot water and by then it will get down to like 102 degrees I found out. So that's me putting in the developer Then you have to agitate it. And then you have to do that for like three more minutes. Just keep agitating it and stuff like that. Then you can pour it out because you can reuse your chemicals like five to six times, but you have to like, it makes it weaker, so you have to put it in for a longer time. Then you put in the Blix, which smells really, really bad, I figured out. So. And then you agitate it, put in the water to keep it to 102 degrees, agitate it. And this is longer, this takes like six minutes, roughly, depends on your chemicals. So yeah, I'm just going to keep going. Then it's time to rinse, and then you put stabilizer in it to make your pictures look crusty. So that's just me putting the stabilizer in, pouring it out. Then you can expose it to the light. Then you have to squeegee it, which is kind of fun. You can see here, you can kind of see the images. Obviously, it's a negative, so it's opposite. It's so like blacks will be white and like so on. And I didn't get to scan them, but. I put them in like archival slips, which are really helpful. And I'll put everything I used in this in the description, all the tutorials and like all the tools I used. So look at that. So yeah, what I learned. Obviously, I learned film is a lot cooler than I, what I originally thought. I thought it was gonna be cool. But, like, doing it is so rewarding. Like, being able to shoot your own shots and then just, like, I don't know. Having a physical form of it is something I've never done before, ever, and it's really cool. So, um, I learned little things like leaving it in the fridge to save it. Um, when you shoot, you want to err on the side of too much exposure then it being too dark, which is the opposite of digital. A digital, you want it to be too dark, so when you edit, you can like bring up um, light instead of everything being washed out. But when you have film, you want it to be too bright, so then the negative, it'll be too dark on the negative, if that makes sense. Like, so the whites will be black, and so you, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but like you kind of have to see it to know exactly what I'm talking about. So sorry, I'm bad at explaining. Um, I feel like not looking and being able to figure out how to put the film on the reel 
from the reel into the tank. It's like a superpower. It felt really cool and rewarding. Um, yeah, obviously I said that. Patience is key. Um, taking shots, you want to like save your film because you only have 24 exposures. So you like try to get the best shot possible and you have to really think about what you want in it and um, how far zoomed you want in it. So that was really different because usually I can just like click, 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 click on my digital and like have bursts or, you know, not don't have to be as exact because you can take up to 64 gigabytes. So um, that's different. You can't see your pictures. I kept wanting to like look down at the back, you know, usually where the screen is, you can see your pictures. I'm like, oh, I can't like I take the picture and be like, oh, man, I can't see it. Like. I have to wait a week until I develop it or whatever, which was really hard to get used to, and I still am not used to that part. Um, it's ex kind of expensive, more expensive than I thought, but it's something I really wanted to do, and I couldn't think of any other projects as good as this one. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'll do it. But I figured out the price, and it's like $0.30 cents a picture, which isn't that bad like cons like compared to... Polaroids, which is like a dollar or something, you know, it's not that bad, and it's really fun, so it's a good hobby. You can make some money off of it. Um, the process is hard, but once you have it down, it's like really, really simple, and you get used to like, you know, picking up, agitating it, putting it in the water, you know, developing, mixing the chemicals. Like, it seems so hard, but once you do it like once or twice, it's fine. Um, and getting water to a certain heat is actually really hard and annoying. So, on that note, I had a lot of fun with this project. Hopefully you had fun um, hearing me ramble on and on. I could talk about it for hours, but I won't. So, thanks for um, listening to me talk. And, yep.